Full time at Selhurst Park, another humiliation for Arsenal on the road, 3 0 to Crystal Palace. And more of the same, really. I mean, a horribly familiar performance, very much akin to the one we produced at West Brom. At least we scored in that game. And how have we not corrected some of the mistakes we saw on that occasion? It's been the story all season long. We fail to prepare for the obvious threats. We act as if we're baffled by things that, you know, amateur fans, people like us who are just watching the games as supporters can see coming. You know, we all know how Crystal Palace are going to play. We know they're going to play direct to Christian Benteke. We know Wilfred Zaha is a threat on the break with his speed and his skill. And yet we seem completely incapable of dealing with them and unwilling of co uh, to compete with them. Arsenal, it struck me during this game, are at the moment a club full of cowards. Cowards on the pitch and cowards off the pitch. On the pitch, certainly, the way we shied away from challenges, you know, on the first goal, on the... I mean, on all the Palace goals, really, we didn't match their physicality throughout the game in midfield. The likes of Jason Punchin were made to look like world beaters because we just didn't compete. Um, cowards off the pitch, too. You know, there was a shot late on of Ivan Gazidis, and I do feel like the board simply aren't looking after the best interest of the club anymore because the best interest of the club is to resolve the manager's future and the only resolution can be that he goes now it has you know it's it's broken i think beyond repair and uh yeah i mean i could spend time talking about the individual goals but that's not really the point is it i mean from back to front all 11 players were worse than their palace counterparts and they certainly don't have less ability. I mean, I think the relationship between the fans and the manager is more strained than it's ever been. I think the relationship between the fans and the players is beginning to break down now. We saw chance tonight, audibly on Sky, from the away fans of Arsene Wenger, we want you to go. And also, you're not fit to wear the shirt. And to, to the players. So everybody's a target, and justifiably so. The players are not performing for the manager, but nor is the manager getting the best out of them. Uh, I mean, on specific points, what happened to Alexis at centre-forward? Why was that abandoned? Does anybody know? Is it because he's going and they don't want to build a team around a player who's off in the summer? I don't know. I like Danny Welbeck, but there's no reason he can't play on the left-hand side. I, I just can't understand why that was changed. Alexis, for, for all that's wrong with his game, and he does give the ball away, he was consistently our most dangerous player. And when I talk about cowards on the pitch, it's not just about what they do without the ball, not going into challenges properly. It's about what they do with the ball, about making passes that are so safe, so conservative. This monotonous approach play without taking any risks. Alexis does at least do that. And I understand some of the criticism of him, but I think... He's brave on the ball. And I couldn't say that about many of the other Arsenal players out there tonight. And I know it's hard when you're on a losing run. And Arsenal are on a terrible, terrible losing run now. Uh, I'm going to have to check the stats in terms of the away games. But it's since January, we've shipped three goals at Bournemouth, three goals at Bayern, three at Chelsea, three at Liverpool, three at West Brom, and now three at Palace. It's... It's, it, it, it's a joke, really. It's an absolute joke. I mean, I've got Scar on here. Theo Walcott's been wheeled out to say the same old crap that he always says. Uh, I can't even be bothered to watch. It's on mute. I won't go back and watch it. You know what he's going to say. Oh, you know, we're all in the fight for fourth. Oh, I just can't even, you know. I can't, uh, uh, uh. The board said that they would make a mutual decision with the manager when the time is right. Well, the time is right and it didn't doesn't need to be mutual. The manager has to go. I do think there's genuinely an argument that an, a caretaker would stand a better chance of getting the best out of these players between now and the end of the season. I don't think that's remotely realistic. But I do hope that what we saw at Selhurst Park just puts paid to the idea that Arsene Wenger could stay at this club. It is not going it is not feasible for him to turn this around. And even if he does turn it around and put together three, four wins, it will happen again. It's happened again and again over a decade. And I think as a fan base, we've sometimes been guilty of 
hoping against hope for it to turn around, but surely we're all awoke, we're all woke now to the idea that it just won't. And not an FA Cup win, not even scraping into the top four by some miracle should change that. Uh, we're watching the end of something. And it, it, dragging it out would be cruel on everybody involved. I hope the power brokers at the club recognise that now. Because it's, it's, it's ugly already and it's going to become uglier and uglier. Nobody's excused, not the players, not the manager, not the board. Everybody is culpable in what we're witnessing the last few months. But people will have to pay the price. Um, there we go. Another one of these ones, eh? How bad are West Ham? Honestly, how bad are West Ham? <laughs>